Ko bear. <laughs> Summer look. Or... Ko. Madam, can you please cooperate tonight? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Wait. They're they're not cooperating. <laughs> so Come on, I have treats. You be nice. How's summer? Wait for it. I don't know if it can be heard. Is it working? I'm so sorry. This is the first time we're doing this. Hi, Hayes. Oh, thank you for such oh, summer. Please, can you can you stay? Because it's usually her bedtime. <laughs> Sorry. Say hi. Summer, say hi. They're not very active at this point. But let's see if she's gonna try. Work this. Oh, come on, you tap it. Come on. I'll give you a treat if you tap it. Tap the button. Tap the button. Come on, tap it. Tap the button. Touch the button. Summer. Come on. Come on. Make it sound. You know how to do that. Summer. Oh my god, you're not cooperating. Anyway, it's not working. Summer. Hi. Um, how old is Bailey? They are both six years old. Bailey turned six years old last November, and then Summer turned um, six years old as well last April. Wow, this is so cool. But... <laughs> this is so weird. As you can see, <laughs> that's how she normally is. She, she, she's, she's not very active. Um, I often get questions as to how active poodles can get. Ever since she was a puppy, she's always been like this. That one is the super, super active pup. And it's usually their bedtime, that's why. Uh, they're, they're, norm they're like this. Okay, let's just wait for maybe uh, a few more minutes and then we'll start in a bit. Um, for those who are online, is the audio okay? I hope the audio is fine. Can you teach me how to train a poodle not to bite? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, how, how, how do I... Maybe I can make a video on that, maybe. Um, because training them not to bite. Ah, maybe I can show you how I can entice her to start biting and playing with me. She gets really rough. This one doesn't, ever since she was a puppy. I think it's also, it's also the personality of the dog. Um, it depends. Because between the two, the heavy chewer and the heavy biter would be Bailey for sure. This one, if you would notice, their snouts are uh, um, slightly different. Summer has a smaller snout, and Bailey has the standard poodle um, snout. Hmm. Are poodles high-maintenance dogs? In terms of grooming, I would have to say yes. But overall, if you will disregard the, the grooming, I don't think they are. Um, 
high maintenance dogs. I know you want a treat. Okay, go place. Summer! <laughs> place. Place. Okay. Good job. Sit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> the only way to get her to stay is to give her treats. Mm. Yes, you are being good. Please stay there. There you go. Hi. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I'm very new at this, but... Uh, so let's begin. Okay. So we just um, we start, we decided to make a live because some of you are requesting it, and we just wanted to touch base with you guys. Um, thank you guys so much for uh, supporting our channel, for loving the girls. Um, I hope the content that we have been making are you know useful to you guys, and uh, the girls are super thankful. <laughs> I'm super thankful because at least. <laughs> The YouTube channel is paying for their expenses because for the longest time, I what I would do is I would set aside money from my salary to... I made their own bank account <laughs> so that, you know, I have money for them in, case of, in cases of emergency and stuff. Right. Uh, so we're here to um, hang out with you guys for a few minutes. Um, it's It's... It, it depends and um, to ask, uh, feel free to ask as much questions as you want. We'll try to answer them as much as we can. Okay, let me just scroll up to the questions. Uh, which one? Right. Summer, come on, place. Touch the button. Touch the button first. <laughs> Touch the button. Tamaru! Come on, touch a button. Touch the button. This one. Summer. This one. Touch it. Touch a button. <laughs> so as you can see, it's 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 not as perfect as you know how it is usually like in um in the videos. Those are edited, of course. I mean it, more often than not, they would do it when they're focused, but when they're distracted like this, especially this one, it's so hard to motivate her. Can you please touch the button at least? Ah, oh, Samaru! Come on, touch. Come on, touch it. Touch it. Okay. There you go. <laughs> place. Bailey, place. Place. I know. Oh. Place. Uh-uh. Place. Come on. That's a good girl. Yes. Alright, so let's get on with the questions. Are poodles high maintenance dogs? Um, like I said earlier, it depends. If, for grooming, I would definitely say yes. But overall, I don't think they are, especially if they're well trained. I really want to get a poodle, but... I stay in an apartment. Do they bark a lot? Summer is often mistaken as a dog that's mute because she barely barks. This one only barks when she hears the doorbell ring or if she knows that there's someone at the door. But otherwise, they're not. Their barks are not as loud. I think it also depends from dog to dog. So with Summer, her bark is more uh, low-pitched relative to Bailey. Let's see if we can try to make her speak. Speak, Bailey. Come on, speak. <laughs> you guys are failing me. You want a treat? Okay. Speak. Come on, speak. 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 Louder. Speak. 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 <laughs> yeah. Good girl. So that's how loud the bark is. But if you're worried about like they go wild and then your neighbors will go crazy and um, 
complain about it. So long as the dog is well trained, it should be fine, even in a, an apartment. Because I have a lot of friends who have poodles and they live in condos and apartments and they have no problems with their dogs. Hello, Muzz and Kath. Uh, how many times Bailey and Summer are brushed? I am guilty before when they were, um, when I was a little bit more free <laughs> and I had more time for myself, I brushed them every single day. And then, of course, it's very normal for any human being. You, you will get lazy from time to time. And so you can brush them every other day or every other two days. It should be fine. So long as you know how to do it properly, it should be okay. So I personally brush them. Uh, the longest that I don't brush them would probably be three days. But that's, it's not like cr the crazy brushing that, that I would do during their regular grooming sessions. It's just quick brushing. And so long as you have the ice on ice, it should be fine. Next. Uh, I have a red toy poodle named Mia. Hi, Mia. And she is one year old and has a sporting cut. Oh, thank you. Um, there are many cuts for poodles. If you're worried about the maintenance when it comes to grooming, you can actually put them in a summer cut. It's just my personal preference that I don't like the shaved look of poodles, especially the snouts. Some people prefer that their snouts are shaved because usually poodles um, in the, content, the standard continental, continental clip, their snouts are usually shaved and it also prevents the tear staining and stuff. You guys are... So as you can see, one is food driven, the other one is play driven. See that? <laughs> All right, next. My poodle sleeps almost most of the time. Yes, um, as puppies, they will sleep for at least around 70% of the day. That's because they're still growing and stuff, so it should be fine. So, I know, stop it. Good job. They're getting bored. Billy, where's Summer? Billy, Billy Boo, where's Summer? Where's Summer? Don't block the camera. Where's Summer? Where's Summer? Where's Summer? Where's Summer? Where's Summer? Not that one. <laughs> Where's Summer? Where's Summer? Where's Summer? Yeah, stay. Where's Summer? Billy, where's Summer? Where's Summer? Where's Summer? Show me where's Summer. There she is. <laughs> Good job. I tried teaching that trick to Summer, but she won't listen. Again, where's Summer? Where's Summer? Where's Summer? Yes. Good girl. They're gonna fall asleep otherwise. <laughs> Come on, place. Place. Good girl. Drop it. Okay. One more. Place. All right. Place. Place. Yes! Good girls. All right, next. Um, brushed, okay. So I have a red toy poodle. I we got that. Yes, they sleep a lot uh, when they're puppies. 12 weeks old red toy poodle and he's really yes they are very 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 smart i i promise um whether you're you know what you're doing or not they are very very smart dogs my friends have a shiba inus um the only reason why i really chose poodles is because i really can't afford the the shedding because um, we have our whole family, we have a history of asthma. And my sister just recently found out that she was um, deadly allergic to 
um, animal fur. So it's, gr it's good that um, we have poodles because otherwise I think my mom will surely force me to get rid of my dogs. I know <laughs> people will judge me for my family for that, but that's what I mean by my whole family are not... A my dad is a fan of dogs, but the thing is, mom is boss. So, <laughs> you know, if she says no, it's a no. But if, if dad says yes, it, that, and mom says no, that's a no. <laughs> Our toy poodle, Lucky. Hello, Lucky. He is three years old and is a rescue. Oh my gosh, I hats off to people who are able to rescue. Like I mentioned before, I did try looking at shelters before, but the thing is here in the Philippines, you won't exactly find um, purebred dogs in shelters because it's sad because the culture here is, you know, we have so much bias with the purebred dogs and stuff. So uh, you will rarely find a purebred pup. And like I mentioned, even if I wanted to rescue another breed or maybe just a ra uh, any dog for that matter in the shelter as much as i would want to i cannot because of the limitations of the health risks in my family uh what made me choose the breed that's a good question i was actually planning to get a chihuahua once again before just a female but um, my office mate um was getting a poodle that time and we were talking about it and then he I, I before I had this image of poodles that they were noisy dogs they were they were they were very smart but uh very snotty and what do you call that uh hard to train and uh they snap meaning they bite because I had a friend before in high school and I went to her house once and her poodle, uh, I guess, um, it wasn't very trained. So it would chase us <laughs> and bite us. And it's not the play biting. It, it's really like aggression and stuff. So I got scared of the breed. And then my office mate said, no, they're not like that. Uh, we've had poodles all our lives and they're far from what you're describing to me. It may just be an isolated case with your friend. And that's where I started researching about them and I fell in love with the breed. And so here I am with poodles and I don't think I will be getting any other breed of dog. I do want the, the bigger standard poodle once I have my own place because uh, no way in hell will my mom allow me. Do they get attached? Yes, very, very much so. That's why you have to know the personality of your dog. For example, between the two, the one who's more attached to me is Bailey. The way I handle her is that I don't give her as much attention versus Summer. Now, people will say that, you know, that's wrong. You're being unfair. But the thing is, that's what she needs. So if I give more attention to Bailey, she will start being aggressive towards Summer. So in order to prevent that, I limit the, give, the amount of attention I give to her because she gets anxious the more attention I give to her. So um, I, I guess I was lucky to have found um, a good trainer and he explained to me how you have to understand the mentalities of dogs. The thing is people, we tend to... Um, think that dogs are humans. They're not. Uh, they're different from us and uh, they have a set of ways. They read us through our gestures and movements and stuff like that. So you can't apply how you would handle a, uh, a problem with a human to your dogs. You have to do, handle it the way they would understand it. So that's the way it is with Bailey. Um, if I give her more and more attention. I don't know if you guys watched the video where and I showed you how she had severe anxiety before. Um, she would howl every time I leave. And that was a sign that uh, she, was get, she was too attached to me. So I had to distance myself from her. And <laughs> that was one of the hardest things I ever did. I wasn't allowed to pet nor give attention 
to either of them for a whole week. So if you're if you're having that problem, you can try that. Do not pet, uh, make eye contact, and uh, give attention to your dog. So eye contact is considered attention to dogs, especially for dogs like Bailey with um, who have more tendency towards um, anxiety. Thank you for thinking the girls are cute. Oh, hi. Yeah, I did. I, I think I replied to your email already. I hope I did. <laughs> he said I'm going to kill you. But okay, yay. Shout out to Hazel, Judge Judy Lim. Um, she was the one. Ah, she was the one who recommended the kefir to me. The one who, if, if you guys want, to uh, get advice, like um, for uh, I don't know dog hacks and stuff, you better contact Judge Judy Lim because she has had dogs for the longest time, and she has so many dogs that I think more often than not she's already experienced most um, health problems that any pet parent would have would have had. So yeah. Thanks for that, Haze. Why am I not showing my face? <laughs> because I'm already about to go to sleep and I'm embarrassed. And I think, aren't they cuter in camera? <laughs> Do I recommend poodles as a family dog? Yes, definitely. A 14-year-old? Yes. Um, I wouldn't recommend the toy poodles only to like people with babies. Not because the poodle will snap at the baby or anything, but because they're more delicate relative to the other sizes. If you have young kids, um, like seven years old and younger, I would recommend either a miniature or the standard poodle. But the thing is, of course, the bigger the dog, the more um, exercise it would need. So make sure you have the time to be able to do that. And of course, training, training, training is very important. Because once you've, you know, set it up when they're young, they're going to live with whatever it is that you train them all throughout their lives. I promise you that. Where am I? Yes, poodles can be very bossy, especially Summer. As you can see, she has her own way of things. And even if I try to make her stay, she will not because she has her own mind. And more often than not, that, that girl does not listen to me. So if you ask me who is easier to train, it's definitely that little girl over there. The other one has her own life. You're having a hard time with potty training. Uh, this is a hard question to, um, to answer. Maybe you can send me a message. I'll, I'll see what I can do, um, how, what you're having problems with. What's your take on the tail, uh, the tail clipping? That's what you call um, the docking of the tail. Yeah, it's uh, Summer's tail. Summer, come here. Summer, -o. let me show you. Come here. So tail docking means when they clip the tails of the dogs as a puppy. So this one is actually wrong because Poodle's tail should not be docked too short. It should be a little longer, much like Bailey's tail. That's the one allowed in the, um, the, show, the show ring. Bay, come here. Come here. You show them your tail. Come here. Come on. Come here. Bailey. Good girl. Come on. There. As you can see, hers is longer. That's the standard um, tail docking. That, yeah, that was practiced. Um, before, it, it was more prevalent, I think. But now, more and more breeders are discouraging it. It's really just preference. There's, there's, there's no significant uh, benefit that the dogs would get when the, do the tails are docked. Um, I didn't know what it meant before. I thought it was a standard, so when I was searching for a poodle before, 
I would search multiple ads and then in every single ad they would always put there uh, with papers, meaning it's registered in the kennel clubs and stuff and then tail docking. So I thought that was like a standard that I had to follow because back then, you know, there was hardly anything I could find online. Um, there's also Jew claw clipping. Jew claw means, so the dogs, much like humans, they have like five um, nails and stuff. The Jew claw is the one that's closest, um, the one that's further from the other four of their paws. It's somewhere like here. And then the Jew claw meaning they chop it off much like the tail. So it's unnecessary and I would highly discourage it. If your poodle, if, you know, if you have the chance to tell the breeder and they do practice it and if you can prevent it, I would suggest that you do because it help. The, apparently that claw, it may be useless to most people or it may seem useless, but it helps with the balance of the dog. Meaning if they get, uh, like let's say if you're gonna go hiking with them and stuff, the juke claw, when they slide, it prevents them from sliding. So it's actually important for that to help with the balance. Summer has her juke claws, and that's why when we go hiking, she she's a lot faster and quicker and more confident versus Bailey because her juke claws were removed by her breeder. So yeah, if you can, please, I highly discourage it. Right. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry if I miss any of your questions. Are sweaters mandatory? <laughs> no, of course not. Um, poodles can withstand the cold, um, the cold. The continental clip, I don't know if you guys have read articles about that. There it, the the clips of poodles it's not just for a show it was done with a purpose so back then dogs um, poodles were actually bred as water retrievers for hunters so they would fetch the maybe the ducks or the birds that are shot by the hunters and this is during the cold weather that's why they would leave the fur where they think um, the heat would be released. For example, their their chest has to be protected by the fur from the cold waters, and then of course the lower part of their paws, like their wrists and stuff. So, there it it it, it it's grooming with a purpose. So yes, they they can definitely withstand the cold. I don't really think they need sweaters, but some people th still put the sweaters, but. They're fine. Uh, I have friends in the States. Um, they have poodles and they just let them out. They're, they're much like huskies. Their furs are definitely different, but they can handle the cold for sure. Can poodles be left outside the house? Yes, definitely. Definitely they can. But I think it would depend on how safe it is for them to be left outside. And so long as they have access to water and you know it's fairly secure and there's no danger i think it should be fine but personally why um again it, it's it's really up to you but i prefer them inside because if they're outside you run the risk of them getting ticks and fleas from other dogs if there are other dogs from your neighbors and stuff <clears throat> what to do on the first day when you bring home a puppy i have a video coming up on that um i made a video on the five things five most important things that i think would be useful to teach your pups as soon as you bring them home i was actually going to ask for your opinions on that i i made like an intro video on it but i don't think it's long enough that I I was able to show how to do it like step by step but it does give you an idea on how to do it if you guys want like a step by step um, separate video for each because you can't exactly teach them all at the same time in the first place like maybe I could 
make one individual video per week because that's what how I did it. Each of those five tricks that I taught them, I taught them um, depending on how fast they learn uh, within three days or in, within a week's time. So one week I trained them with one trick and then the next. Of course, it's side by side with potty training, which is why um, it's not included in the potty training. I did not include potty training in that um, list. What colors do toy poodles come in? Depends on the colors of the parents. Yes, it would. It's um, poodles. I think is the only breed that comes in a lot, um, all sizes, meaning toy, miniature, standard, and as well as a variety of colors. So they will any color that you can possibly think of. I think a poodle can be, except for um, the merlet. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that term. It's an Australian Shepherd, I think. That's a color of an Australian Shepherd wherein the colors are like... Uh, the base coat is silver and then it has patches of black. Um, feel free to research what Merlet means. So if somebody sells you a toy poodle or a poodle that, that they call Merlet, that's a mixed breed. It's not a purebred poodle. So poodles can come in solid colors like the two girls. Bailey is a red poodle and Summer was an apricot but now she's considered a cream. Uh, they can also come in chocolate, cafe a lot, um, silver, black, blue. Uh, I'm not sure. They're also party colored poodles meaning they have two colors or three colors. Um, all sorts really they they come in all sorts of colors that's why sometimes uh people would say that it's just a mud when it's actually a poodle it's just a party colored poodle so the poodles that are not solid they're called party colored poodles um it really depends on your preference uh that's why there is also no guarantee that if let's say you breed a red poodle and a red poodle you're not gonna get like um, a party colored poodle it's possible to have that if the genetic line produced that in the past or something like that would you consider a third pup yes i very much want a third pup but the thing is i asked for permission from my mom it's uh it's hard <laughs> it's not my house uh Let's just leave it at that. But I definitely want another one. But I don't think I'll be getting a toy poodle. I most likely I will be getting a standard poodle when I have my own place. <laughs> Mark saying it does come. Right age for first haircut. Uh, that would depend on your groomer. With Summer and Bailey, I had them first groomed at six months because I could no longer handle the fur. Can they be bossy? Yes, definitely. Summer is my very, very bossy dog. If I, The way I see it, if Summer uh, went to an owner who cannot handle her personality, meaning would not be able to establish being the alpha of the pack, um, she will most likely run the house because if any chance she gets to test um, for the alpha position, she will. She does that with me too, but it's not very often. But if she sees someone who has a weaker personality than her, then she would go for it. What's your take on... Okay, I'm done with that. Are they... Oh my gosh. Uh, the stream? If you guys are interested, sure. I, I can leave the stream on. My puppy is almost four months. Do you have any tips regarding the biting? Oh my gosh, yeah. That was a nightmare. Um, you can try spraying the bed with 
uh, lemon. It's no guarantee that it will prevent it, but oh my gosh, this one was the notorious girl who almost ruined my whole bed. That's why I, I have a new bed <laughs> over here. <laughs> I finally replaced it after so many years because she ate every single corner of my bed. Um, that's when she was teething. But of course, you can also encourage the dog with the toys. Okay, so this is what I mean by giving the toy to a dog. Most owners will just say, here, take the toy. It doesn't work that way. You have to make it exciting for them. Meaning, you can... See that? That's giving a toy to distract them, to get their attention and focus on the fun toy instead of chewing. That's how you give a toy. You don't just present it, here, you have lots of toys. Nope, that's not gonna work. Um, you can try that. You can also do the spraying of the um, lemon. It, it, it helped, but again, it's still no guarantee. It, it really, really, really depends. Okay. I'm trying to leash train my puppy. He already knows the basic commands, like said, but he hates being on the leash. How do you train them on the leash? The leash. Ah, okay. Let me get the leash. <laughs> uh, uh. Where's my leash? There. Okay. Oh my gosh. I am so sorry. The stream is getting longer and longer. Okay. So this is how I did it. Um, before... When I didn't know how to do it properly, see how she gets excited with the leash? Sit down. When she gets excited, I drop the leash. And then I just wait for her to settle down because again, she's a very anxious and excited pup. So see how she settles down? The yawning doesn't mean she's sleepy. That means she's releasing her stress. I learned that from my trainer. I did not learn that by myself. So when she settles down, that's when I pick up the leash again and then I would make her wear it. So the same thing goes for um, training your pups. So of course, it's something unfamiliar to them. So what you can just do in the beginning is just leave it to their side if they're comfortable with that, and then associate it with something positive. You can give them treats, you can play with them and stuff. And while playing, you can even put it on top of them like that so that it's fine. So see here how Summer is getting annoyed with the, and I'll just distract her again. But that's really her personality. She's, she's very lazy. She's, I would call this little girl a very, very boring dog. She's more fun, honestly. So yeah, if your dog is scared of it, then just leave it further. And then depending on how they get comfortable with it, you can move it closer and closer and then eventually put it on top like that and then still associate it with a treat. You can, Bailey is not food driven, so she's play driven, so her reward are the toys. See, she doesn't care if she has it on her. She would just chase after whatever she wants. Bay, come here, come on, bring it back, come here. Come on, come here. Good girl, come on, come here. Good girl. So I hope that helps. I'll see if I can make a video on that. The thing is, one of the hardest videos to make are the training videos because I don't think I'm good enough to be able to show you how I train and stuff. I'm no trainer. But I would be more than happy to share what I know. Next, I'm actually going to name my toy poodle Luna or Lucia. That's such a cute name. If I had a new poodle, I, I, I honestly don't know what I would name it yet. 
but I really, really want one. The thing is, I don't want to think of names because it's going to get me more excited and stuff. The thing is, I can't even have it. Right. Uh, do you have tips for picky eaters? Picky eaters. Um, that was a big problem for us, but it's different for... It's hard because we all feed different food to our dogs and I never want to force my opinions on other people meaning I hate it when people get uh, insecure not exactly insecure but they get uncomfortable when I talk about how I would feed my dogs raw and home cooked and they think they would have to do the same the thing is you know it's different from dog to dog really some some dogs can't work with raw some dogs work well with raw some dogs work better with home cooked and vice versa so for picky eaters you can try asking your vet to give like an appetite booster that's what I did initially with them when they were still eating kibble and they were so picky um, another thing you can do is get like food toppers you can make something um, that's new to their palate and then add it or sometimes you can even put uh, I don't know, dog safe peanut butter or cream cheese and stuff. Those are options that you can do. But some vets will also tell you that if you do that, then they would become more and more picky, which is kind of true as well. But I think the best, excuse me, best fix is to make sure you exercise your dog first, get them really tired, because when they're tired, they will, they will, they will surely eat right after. I hope that helps. Oh my gosh, your dog is like my, um, my, my aunt's dog. His name is Jack. He's a, she, he was a rescue. He's a Westie, a West Highland Terrier. And his most favorite treat is a pandesal. Okay, for people who are abroad, pandesal is a, a native bread here in the Philippines. Um, it's much like a burger bun, but it's smaller. And it's quite airy. Oh, thank you for commenting on our TikTok. I'm not very good with TikTok. I am trying to figure it out. <laughs> so please bear with me, but I try. It's, I, I used to, I'm not a TikTok hater, but I didn't like TikTok because I couldn't understand it before. But now I finally am getting the hang of it. It's so much fun. Okay, have a question. I don't know, but why Candy can't? Jealous. Uh, yeah, so that jealousy is from getting too attached to the owner. So I think I mentioned it earlier. You can try giving less attention to Candy because that will really help. Uh, it's hard, but try for a whole week. No petting, no attention, meaning no eye contact, no whatsoever, especially when she asks for it. You can pet her when she doesn't ask for it meaning she's calm like this or this then you can pet her but if she's like going to you running to you wagging her tail super excited and stuff no attention promise that that will that will make a very very big difference my dog is aggressive and he's three months old what do you mean by aggressive uh, meaning play ah let me show you how Bailey is with Blay. I don't know if she'll do it though. She can get, she gets bitey. No, she's more interested in the toy. She's super active. Come on. She's not, I'm not sure if she's gonna respond, but she has the tendency to bite hard when we play because um, she's, she's the heavy chewer. If that's what you mean by aggression, that's not aggression, that's just play, I think. But it really depends. Uh, what you can do, you can try taking a video and 
you can show you can send it to me on Instagram or our Facebook uh, page. I'll see what I can try to read from what I know. But if it gets worse, I I, I think it might be best to um, seek a professional. But yeah. <laughs> We'll definitely take lemon. Yeah, you're yeah, you're very welcome. I <laughs> go. Oh, she knows she's associated that. I know you want this. <gasps> Summer. Mm. Mm. Let's get rid of this because she will not stop. Is coughing and sneezing normal? It depends on how often the coughing and sneezing is. Sometimes you would think, Summer, you've been eating nonstop all day. Stop it. Uh, dogs have what you call reverse sneezing, which people mistake for sneezing, regular sneezing. But so long as it's not often, meaning not more than five times, no, not more than three times a day, no, let's not more than five times. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if it does get worse, meaning they have a runny nose and stuff like that, then I think that's a sign for you to take them to the vet. They're one of the They're one of the brights. Oh my gosh, hi Grace. <laughs> Grace is my sister's uh, former office mate. When will my two-month-old poodle? The teething will stop around one year of age. It starts at around five months, four to five months. So yeah, you're going to have to deal with that. Hi, cello. Um, your poodle eats raw. That's amazing. I wish my poodles will eat raw. Um, they're not super big fans of raw. That's why I rotate home cooked and raw. Bailey would eat raw, but summer, <laughs> it depends on her flavor of the day. But yeah, for supplements, right now I'm currently using NHV and I have been using that for four years and it's amazing, but the, their price point is quite steep. It's just that it was the only thing that worked for my girls, which is why I recommend it. Uh, the cheaper option for me that I have been using as well is what you call Augustine Approved. It's an Australian brand. It's also being sold on Amazon. I think they're affiliated with uh, Dogs Naturally magazine. They also have their own store. I'm pretty sure they're also on Amazon. I'm just not quite sure. But I think it's best to check their website. It's called Dogs Naturally, DNM University or DNM Store, if I'm not mistaken. It stands for Dogs Naturally Magazine. And they sell a lot of supplements. Um, there are vast, you can check them out there. Is a heater, huh? What do you mean by heater allowed? when to get their nails cut for the first time ah that is one thing that you can teach your dog as soon as they get home much like the how i showed you the this um the leash you can do the same thing for the nail clippers um you can just rub it off them and stuff so that they won't think that foreign object is um something bad all the time that's what you call socializing that might be a good idea for like a future video topic. How to socialize. Because before, when people would tell me, you have to socialize your dog, I thought that meant me bringing my dog to uh, dog parks and meeting other dogs and stuff. Apparently, socializing doesn't necessarily mean like meeting other dogs. It means socializing them, getting them used to the things that will be part of their whole lives as you know being a, a family member of your pack 
of your human family. So if you guys are interested in a video like that, please leave a comment and I would be more than happy to come up with something. When, when did your toy poodles reach their top height and weight? Um, I think at 1.5 years old. Bailey, I thought Bailey was a miniature, honestly, because she kept growing and growing relative to Summer, who's short. Summer is only 8 inches in height, and Bailey is around 9.5, almost 10. When did your poodles, 4 months old, Well, your poodle, if your poodle is a toy poodle, then the maximum height would be around 10 inches to 11 inches, depending on the kennel club in your um, home country. In the Philippines right now, I think we have shifted from following the AKC to the FCI. So 11 inches is the tallest that a poodle can get to be called a toy poodle here in the Philippines. Hello, Magic Arts. How did you teach your poodles how to listen to the command? To the no command. Ah, I don't think you really have to teach the dog what no means because they're so smart that every time you say no, and they would associate the no to something bad, but. Some trainers would say that it's actually not a good idea because you you are, if you will use fear as um, your main like point of thrust for the training, you run the risk of um, the dog being fearful to what you do. I made that mistake with Bailey, so I would highly recommend positive reinforcement more than. Um, the teaching them negative commands like no rather than no just try to i can't find the right word for it but try to make the experience positive and then get their attention to do something else that you don't want them to do if that makes sense but yeah i made that mistake with bailey and every time i say no or i raise my voice um, given that she's a very fearful pup, it, it's, it's been hard to get that um, imprint on her, and I really, really regret it. How do your dogs get along with other dogs? Ah, I don't have problems whatsoever with um, socialization with other dogs, most especially with Summer. So, Bailey is the same thing. It's just that she doesn't like dogs that are super high energy. So I get her tired first before introducing them because there are some owners who would just, if the dogs are pulling at each other, that means they're too excited and Bailey doesn't work well with that. So I stay away from dogs that are super excited because she will snap. But of course, I also teach Bailey to um, build her tolerance when it comes to that because, you know, I can't exactly tell the other owner if there's a dog approaching us like that, that, hey, get your dog trained and et cetera. That, that's, a, that's a recipe for disaster. I'm so sad I gave away my toy poodle. Oh, how come? Why did you give him away? Ah, yeah. That's hard. I, I will never judge people for that because, you know, it, it's, really, it's really hard if it's not your house. And I can totally relate to that. When should we start the colors and leashes? If you're talking about training them to get used to the collars and leashes, as soon as they, you get home, it, you, you can start right away. You don't have to wait for them to be able to walk outside. Do you have favorite training treats? 
yes, I do. Um, it's just an all-natural brand because um, they like meaty treats. So we go with Pocket Plate. I would suggest going for any all-natural brand that you have in your home country. Oh. Wow. Oh my gosh. It has been an hour. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you guys for sticking around. Uh, I bought my toy poodle and I thought it was a female. And the seller lied. It was a male. And that's why my mom didn't like him. Oh. I guess we can just leave it at that. Um, it's, it's really hard. Uh, getting a dog is such a big responsibility. And it's not just... That's, okay, that's a thing. One last thing before I end the live stream. When you get a dog, make sure that it's not just your decision. It's a family decision. Because, for example, with training, some people would just send their dogs to a trainer and then they would just leave them to the trainer. And then, of course, the problem gets fixed with the trainer. But once they get back to their home, then the problem comes back as well. Why? Because you did not follow through with how the trainer handled the behavioral issues and etc. So it's actually a joint effort um, training your dogs. Thankfully, my family, they're not exactly with me all the time when it comes to the training, but as much as they can, they would follow what I would recommend them to do for example if i ask them to ignore the dogs then they would but more often than not of course they they're not as <laughs> they're not as strict and consistent so the dogs get confused with that um that's why it's been hard to fix bailey's anxiety because when i don't give attention and then i'm i stand firm with her my mom yeah, yeah, my mom, I don't understand whether she likes dogs or she doesn't like dogs. Because when she sees me being mean, mean, meaning I don't give her attention and et cetera and stuff, um, she takes Bailey's side and then she cuddles her. So that's not helping with the training because Bailey's uh, kryptonite <laughs> is attention. Too much attention will bring out her anxiety. So to prevent it, I have to limit the attention and I have to encourage her being relaxed and calm. So um, that's the goal, to give attention to dogs that are calm. Because if you keep rewarding behavior that's super excited and uh, high energy and stuff, that's the recipe for disaster, meaning those are the dogs that hump, those are the dogs that jump on people uh, who are scared of dogs and stuff They're, those are the same dogs that uh, chew or um, play bite a lot and stuff so yeah um, when you decide to train your dog your family has to be with you 100 percent oh no well not really 100 percent it doesn't have to be 100 percent at least maybe 60 percent 60 to 70 percent or 50 at the very least um, it's better for everyone in the family to be consistent with them. It would really speed up the training, especially with poodles. You can fix the problem in a week if everyone does it all at the same time and are consistent with it. And being consistent means doesn't mean that you just get through with the one week. You have to follow through after that. It has to be a continuous process. Okay? Oh my gosh, that was very long. I am so sorry. I, I did not expect this live to be this long. I have a toy poodle and he's eight months old, but can't stay still. Uh huh. Running around. Okay. That's. I. I promise I will keep this live stream up and I'll try to put um, the breaks where um, I'll note down the stuff that, for example, for the leash training and such so that it, it might be something that you guys can look back to. 
and I will make a video on how to get them, how to read your dogs and how to capture the behavior of getting them to relax because you want calm dogs in the house especially when you have kids and you know it's it's just better for everybody and it's better for the dogs as well because too much energy is actually bad for them because it that's where the anxiety comes in so yeah for calm try okay if your dog is running around all the time and okay yeah normally when the dog is running around and stuff you would say stop no no or uh, you would keep moving when your dog is super excited and running around and everything just stop you don't have to say no you don't have to um, frown or anything just literally stop don't move and then ignore the dog and walk away if he keeps persisting you can do a slight push away and then don't respond to any bite or whatever just push them away if they still keep doing it and then walk away trust me the dog will stop because the reason why they get so excited and um, they get super hyper is through movement dogs like i said they don't respond to verbal they respond through the movements and gestures of people the more movement that you show the more you move around the more you say something the more they get excited because that for them is a response. It's a positive response. They don't think of it as something bad. They're not humans. They are dogs. I hope that helps. Which poodle is best? You mean the size? Oh my gosh, thank you for staying. I'm really sorry. They're usually asleep by 10. That's why, as you can see, they're already super tired. Thank you for sticking around. And I hope, I hope we didn't disappoint you. <laughs> this is our first stream and I'm all over the place, I know. <laughs> but if you guys want this regularly, uh, please just leave a comment that, and I would be more than happy to touch base with you guys at least once a week. Or... I don't know. I've been getting a lot of DMs about dog training, like initial training. I'm not a trainer. Please let me emphasize that. But if I would be able to help you like start out from the beginning, like before you get to involve yourself with a trainer, then I don't know. Maybe we can do a live stream wherein I, we can do it together. Like the trick, uh, the five things that you can teach them as soon as they get home or it could be one video or something, because I know how it feels to just watch a video <laughs> and then you try to figure it out how to do it and stuff. So it's hard when there's no interaction. So I think a live stream might work better when it comes to the training videos. And plus, oh, it's so hard to edit training videos. It, it's the one that takes the most time so because by profession I'm actually a teacher <laughs> but at the same time my degree is on um, editing and stuff so I, I, I get so I get I get OCD <laughs> when it comes to the editing and if it doesn't make sense because I try to um, edit the videos in such a way that it it's comprehensive enough to the point that I hope that it could be applied by the person who is watching it. I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, that's it. I won't take much more of your time. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, the girls, the girls are super thankful. <laughs> uh, Summer is over here. She's she's really lazy. Uh, my clingy dog is Summer, but at the same time, she's also independent. Bailey is my super clingy girl, but she is one who is distant, meaning she just has to see me. Thank you. Thank you so much for staying. Uh, let's end. It's quite late. And wow, I, I cannot believe that it was, it has been an hour. 
So that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks again for subscribing and for sticking around. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Happy New Year.